Carol, as we get you in the know for your Saturday, January 17th, cold temperatures and all around wintry weather impacting many parts of Canada. Now strong wind gusts look to continue in Newfoundland. My goodness, look at the destruction. We're seeing here with some of those winds we've had in recent days. Now the wind in the snow paired up for quite a situation in parts of Quebec. We know also in this week, Ontario got a heavy shot of snowfall that made for very difficult travel. And after all of that snow, you kind of head to the skies for the bird's eye view of yes, all that snow piled up now. In other parts of the country, it hasn't been so much the snow rainfall in parts of British Columbia. However, a much drier pattern on the way to Coquitlam and for many in British Columbia. Although this drier pattern and the lack of rainfall is uh, linked to the polar vortex. We bring in meteorologist Kevin McKay to tell us more. It's interesting how everything always ties together in the weather over Canada. And yeah, that blocking ridge is certainly good news to stop the rain for BC. Anything in red, look at those arches going all the way up to Whitehorse. And also on the East Coast, see some of those reds getting to St. John's. Those are the two areas where we're seeing that subtropical moisture and warmth. So let's first start in the Yukon where it's been pretty impressive over the last couple of days, uh, well into the teens. And this is after, after that deep freeze. So have a look at Burwash in the span of seven days, uh, exactly seven days warmed up. Well, about 57 degrees, absolutely incredible. Before you know it, you're gonna be back down to minus 40. So enjoy it while it lasts. In uh, St. John's, you've been getting that Gulf Stream moisture coming right up to you. And uh, that's what helped St. John's break their all time January temperature record, 16.3, just edging out. Uh, Yukon for the national hotspot on Friday. Now, uh, what goes up must come down. And if St. John's is up, then, well, Florida is down. Have a look at some of these temperatures on Friday. St. John's is warmer than Orlando. So uh, tough luck if you head down to the uh, the deep south for some warmth. Now, uh, over the next uh, couple days, we're going to continue to see the winter weather in the deep south. So yes, the cold, the temp temperatures to start the day. Uh, Tallahassee, nearly minus seven. And now if we can add in some moisture, we can get some winter weather. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Saturday night, tracking this cold front across Mississippi, Alabama, digging into that cold air and look at that blue right down to the Gulf Shores, the Florida Panhandle, Georgia, the Carolinas, right up the eastern seaboard. We're talking about snow right down to the palm trees. Now, uh, this is the bottom edge of that deep trough that the polar vortex is going to be funneling into. Now, the coldest anomaly, Wisconsin and Minnesota, northwestern Ontario, but Toronto in the south, you will be getting into some of the coldest air as well. Now, your standards a little different than the prairies. Winnipeg probably taking the brunt of it for the most prolonged deep freeze. Get past those purples into some of those grays and that's when you know it's cold. So let's have a look at some of the target lows this coming week. Toronto should get down to minus 20, maybe double digits below freezing in St. John's. Winnipeg, not only minus 38, you're going to be spending multiple nights below uh, minus 35. And what a contrast from Calgary to Winnipeg. But you get onto the same team by next weekend. 